Hey quilters, it's Patty Carey of Patty's Patchwork. Welcome to my sewing studio and the For the Brave Quilt Along event, celebrating the 10th anniversary of Northcott's iconic Stonehenge Stars and Stripes collection. This month, we are working on assembling our quilts for month nine. All of our blocks are done, and now it's time to put them together and add the borders. I've got some great tips on how to assemble your quilt. Let's get started. This month we'll use the last of our fabrics. Fabric O for the cornerstones, N for the sashing, and fabric P if we're doing the panel option. Let's start with that first. I will assemble the sections above and below my panel. These are essentially nine patch units, comprised of two blocks plus sashing and cornerstone pieces. I'll chain piece everything together, just like we did with our blocks. I keep my sashing and cornerstone pieces on the bed of my machine at the ready to draw from when I require them for my layout. My first column is a wide column. It's a sashing block column. So I add my second column, which is a narrow column onto that, chain piecing these pieces together. So here I'm adding column two to column one, and then my last row of column two to column one. I'll finger press my seams toward the sashing, then I add column three. Again, a wide column. It is a sashing block column. Making the pieces line up at both ends to keep everything square. Once I've got these sewn, I finger press towards the sashing and I can sew my rows together, pressing the seams toward the sashing rows. The seams will nest beautifully at the corners of the inter, uh, sash, cornerstone intersections. I add these to the top and bottom of my quilt panel and then I'm ready to assemble the blocks. I stack them from bottom to top, put a clip at the top with a tag, flip the stack from right to left, making sure the clip is still at the top, find the tag and reattach it to the top of my stack. Again, start from the last row to the first row, put a clip with a tag at the top, then I flip the stack from right to left so that it's face down, making sure the clip is still at the top, reach behind, grab the tag and re-clip it onto the top. Now they're ready to be constructed. These two side columns are essentially, the side units are essentially three columns. Two of the columns are cornerstone sashing columns and the center column is a block sashing column. So just like I did for the top and bottom sections, I'm going to chain piece adding my cornerstones and sashing pieces as I need them. So my first column is narrow. I'm adding a wide column to it. So I'm adding my block wide column from column two onto my piece from column one, which is a sashing piece. I make my blocks fit the sashing pieces. This is really critical to having the quilt lay flat and be square. Finger press the seams. Now I sew the completed left and right sections to the panel and add the borders. The quilt is done. For the all blocks version, I stack my blocks, arrange my blocks in five rows of four. Then I stack them from last row to first row and I put a tag on each column. So stack from last row to first row, clip my tag onto the top, flip my pile from right to left so it's face down, make sure the clip is still at the top and reattach that tag. This keeps all of the blocks correctly aligned and in the correct rotation so that it makes assembling this quilt really quick and easy. So stack from bottom row to top row, Clip my tag to the top, flip the pile face down, check that the clip is still at the top, and reattach the tag. I take these to the machine. I've got my four stacks of blocks, and I've got my cornerstone and sashing pieces on the bed of my machine. The quilt is essentially 11 rows and 9 columns, and I'm going to chain piece everything together. 
grabbing the cornerstone and sashing pieces as I need them for my assembly. The alternate rows in the quilt and alternate columns are sashing rows and columns. So I am sewing column one, which is a narrow column of sashing and cornerstone pieces, to column two, which is a wide column of block and sashing pieces. I make my blocks fit those sashing pieces, make the pieces line up at both ends. I don't let the machine control how it's going to feed the fabric. I control, and that keeps everything laying nice and square. I work my way down through my stack of blocks, alternating my block rows with my sashing rows, and finger pressing my seams toward the sashing pieces once I've got all of my blocks in my first stack added. Now it's time to add the third column, which is an alternate column of sashing and cornerstone pieces. So every time I have a sashing piece, I'll add a cornerstone. Every time I have a block, I'm going to add a sashing piece. And I chain piece all of this together. By the time I've worked through all four stacks of blocks and added the alternate columns of sashing and cornerstones, I will have used all of my pieces. I'm pressing my seams toward the sashing so that when I sew the rows together, all of those seams will nest beautifully at the intersections of the cornerstones. Once those 10 horizontal rows are sewn, I'll add my borders and my quilt top is ready to be quilted. And there you have it. Our beautiful For the Brave quilt top is assembled. The blocks are together, the borders are on. Now all that's left is the quilting. Now it's your turn. Assemble your blocks into your quilt top, add the borders, then snap a photo and head on over to Northcott's Instagram page to enter the Month 9 giveaway for your chance at some fabulous prizes. And then join me back here next month as I share some ideas on quilting this beautiful quilt along with my tips on binding. Thanks and we'll see you back here next month.